Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Fish of Hex. My name is Travis. Today's video, we're going to be looking at my 3D printing setup here in the fish room. I get a ton of questions asking about what type of printers they are, what upgrades do I have. I'm going to try to answer all those questions here in this video. And also a question that I've been getting recently is, is it worth 3D printing like this in mass and selling? And uh, is it worth the money? Is it, is it uh, something that you enjoy? I'm going to try to answer all that here in the video. So right off the bat, you guys know that I've been uh, 3D printing for the community for about three months. So before that, I had one Ender 3 Pro bone stock here, this one on the left-hand side. That was my very first printer. I had it for a couple months before I started selling anything, just trying to learn how to 3D print. So it's probably, probably been about five or six months total that I've been in this portion of the hobby. So yeah, it has definitely come a long way. It's got a steep learning curve, but I really do enjoy it. And of course, it does help pay the bills. So let's go ahead and get into that. Is 3D printing worth the investment? And it's going to be different for everybody. Um, I would say if you have a base of people who follow you, kind of like I do here on YouTube, you have people already going to a website, then yes, it's definitely worth buying a bunch of printers, upgrading them, and selling things if you can keep up with the demand. Now, if you're just Joe Schmo on Facebook trying to create things and sell things, then I probably wouldn't go out and buy a bunch of printers or buy all the upgrades that I have in here just yet. I would wait until you're starting to get some income in, put some money aside, and then use that money to upgrade the printer slowly. Now, the reason why I decided to go with upgrades was because I could not keep up with the demand. I do about, I don't know, the 3D printing accounts for about one third of my total sales per month. I do between 200 and 300 printer sales or 3D printing orders per month, and of course that's you know that can be combined with coral orders depending on you know people buy coral and 3D printing uh, items at one time. They have done that, you know I do count that as one order. And um, anyway, so I do a quite a bit of orders, and the problem that I had specifically last month um, in April is that we had so many orders come in that I just simply couldn't catch up. Some people are waiting three weeks for a single item to be printed, and I didn't like that, and the reason why that was an issue is because the majority of my printers were stock. I had the stock PCB board, which is the basically the brain of the computer. It was stock, and the thing with a stock PCB board from with these Ender 3s is they don't have thermal protection. If they don't have thermal protection, there's a chance, I mean, it's a very low chance, but that they could overheat and potentially cause a fire. And now I'm sitting on wood here. I have insulation over here, so I'm not in the business of trying to overheat my printers or causing a fire. So... I tried to avoid keeping the printers on at night because of that. I, I was just worried about it and I didn't want to take a chance. And, uh, you know, luckily I didn't have any issues and I don't have any uh, so far. And uh, that was one of the things that really limited me, limited me on the amount that I could print because I was only be, being able to print during the day while I was awake. And, uh, yeah, so that definitely fell behind and I was forced to do these upgrades. So let's go to move into all of the upgrades. I'll grab my piece of paper here because... I just dropped it, have um, a list here so I don't forget. So the uh, first upgrade was the Easy Board from TH3D, and that was the PCB board, the brain basically, has thermal protection, it's a high quality board. It's not the cheapest board in the world, but it definitely is good and uh, is worth the investment. Now I had to wait a while before it was back in stock, but uh, it was definitely worth the amount of money that I paid for. So I got the easy board. So I'm just gonna talk about this printer here and you can account that everything I say upgraded on this printer is for all three of them or all four of them. Now I went with the uh, direct drive from printermods.com, which is this here. It just moves the uh, feed motor over on top of the um, hot end, which by the way, I'm using a Swiss all metal hot end. And uh, between those two things, it really helped with the quality of print. It was just a better overall uh, print. So. Uh, we got the uh, PCB board, the direct drive. Now we got the easy ABL bed leveler, auto bed leveler. Um, went ahead and did that with the spring eliminators. So we're just using blocks in the in the um, to replace the springs. That way I don't have to adjust them. It's just one level, and the easy ABL um, does what it needs to do with that. And we'll talk about how that connects to the Raspberry Pi here in a second. Now. With that, I went ahead and did the Easy Flex, which is the top here, which allows me to uh, take this off. It's magnetic. I know that the original Ender 3 Pro has a magnetic one. That works just fine. I just decided to go with these. I did have glass beds for a while, but again, I went with the Easy Flex just because, uh, well, I, I, it's just easier, hence the name. Um, so we already talked about the bed springs. Next thing I added was a filament sensor, which was a huge issue that I had before. I'd be mid-print, I'd just run out of filament, not realize it in the middle of the night when I had to leave a printer on, say I was making one of these um, 
Uh, they're the Hannah checker holders. These take 10 hours to make, and sometimes I had to leave them on during the night, and I would run out of filament, and it'd just be floating in the air there. It was just a huge mess. So, filament sensor, pretty awesome. When it runs out, it moves the head over here, and it allows me to change out the filament. It purges it, and then it goes back to printing. So it's a really, really, really freaking nice to have that. Um, on top of that, I added a Raspberry Pi, I guess, computer per printer. So we got the Raspberry Pi here, which hooks up to the Wi-Fi and OctoPrint. And then we have the Raspberry Pi camera right there. And you can see that all of them have it. And that way I can monitor the prints while I'm upstairs. I can keep an eye on them and I don't have to be here in the basement uh, checking on things. So that's good to have that. Um, I also want with the, uh, uh, Go the Hero Me cooler and fan upgrade. You see here we have the uh, cooler that I 3D printed and then the, uh, I think it's the 5050 fan upgrade. And uh, yeah, pretty good. I like that, it's pretty quiet and uh, just looks a lot better than this stock uh, cooler. Uh, the next thing we already talked about uh, was the uh, yeah Raspberry Pi. So on top of that, I do have some miscellaneous things. I did upgrade the uh, springs in the back here. I went with an all metal uh, feed, I guess you wanna call that feed uh, section here on the back of the motor. I don't remember the, the actual name of it. But uh, you're not gonna be able to see it because we're printing, but it just allows it to be all metal, no flexing, it works out great, and it holds the filament uh, much better than the stock did. And then I did some miscellaneous upgrades, upgraded the bearings here for uh, you know the wheels and inside um, the rollers, all that stuff, upgraded all that, got higher end uh, rollers. And uh, that's a pretty much about it. Um, there was things that I tried before I went with these upgrades. I did uh, stiffer springs, that was one of the things I originally did. And uh, it just, you know, when you try something, it works out, and then you just kind of upgrade to what you really want later on. So that was just kind of a learning lesson that I had as I uh, went through the upgrading process. But uh, overall, each printer stock is about $300, and then I added $400 of upgrades on top of it. So you're looking at about $700 per printer, all said and done. And um, as I mentioned before, this is not something that you're going to want to do right away, unless you just have money to burn and you want to do it. But I would recommend if uh, you know if you have, I'm gonna put this down. Um, you know, orders coming in, and you can justify spending that much. Then it's good to go. Now, the question is, why did I upgrade everything here? Well, as as you can see, it's pretty much about uh, not only convenience but ease of use. With the automatic bed leveler, it goes through with the uh, Raspberry Pi, and then what it does is it makes an automatic bed and uh, mesh bed, in which then adjusts the height just in case this is off. Um, you know, this isn't completely flat, It with the sensor, it will move the motor up and down to compensate for not being completely flat. So that's really nice. The biggest issue you have with 3D printing is getting that first layer down. And uh, if, if the bed is warped or it's not where it's not completely flat, you're gonna have an issue with that and it could be a problem. So um, let's go ahead and move on to, I guess, Octoprint. I'll show you guys that whole process here. So this is Octoprint, which is, this is just one of the printers. You can see that is the red one. I labeled them up here on the top. So you got red, white, blue, and orange, and you can see everything there. And then if you, say we go to red and we go to the bed visualizer. So the ABL, ABL Touch will go through and do 25 points of contact here on this bed. And you can see that there is a, it's a little bit high in the front left corner. So this is the bed if, as if we were looking at it. And uh, on the grand scheme of things, it's really not that uh, that off. You know, the high points at 0 0.15 and the lows at 0 0.2. So it's really, uh, really, really. It looks it looks like it might be off a lot, but it, it's honestly it's really, really flat. So uh, this is just something that is nice to know uh, because there was a couple beds where the frame was just uh, tilted, the stock frame. So I had to put some washers in there after doing the bed leveler just to kind of see because there was a point where it was kind of really cockeyed and I just put some washers here and it leveled it out and that was with uh, some of the other printers so that's really nice to have also it's a lot easier to upload G codes uh, with the Raspberry Pi Raspberry Pi and it's just overall it's an easier experience and that's what I was looking for is I needed something where I could just send orders directly over to a printer let it let it automatically level let it automatically print I just come back when it's done take it off send the next one and carry on and I don't have to worry about anything which is awesome when you have a lot of stuff going on. Plus, I can let these guys run overnight without worrying about the the, uh, the fire or any issues with that since the board is upgraded. It's a very high quality board with the thermal protection and I don't have to worry about it. And also, the sound. The only thing you can hear anymore is the fan. Dead quiet, 
no more R2-D2 robots having sex in the background of my videos anymore. It's good to go. So that's about it for the 3D printing. I don't want to ramble on and on and on. Um, it's great. It's a fun hobby. And it's best to keep it as a hobby. For me, now it's just another part of my business. Just like with the reef tanks and the selling coral. It was a hobby. It turned into a business. This was a hobby for a very, very short period of time. And now it's a business or part of my business. So, yeah, and I broke this yesterday, pissing around. So i got to reprint that, put that back on there. And, uh, yeah, so if you enjoy it, just create things, have a good time. Um, and don't go out and steal people's ideas. Don't go off Thingiverse and then download it and sell it. Don't do that crap. If you're going to sell something, you need to create it from scratch and like Tinkercad or something like that, and then you need to go from there. Um, you can do variations of other, other people's stuff. I know there's one guy, somebody sent me a website. There's one guy who takes all of my designs, tweaks them just a, a tiny bit, and then he sells them on his own website. So kudos to that jack off. <laughs> so, I mean, everybody wants a piece of the pie, but you know, if you're going to take a piece of the pie, at least contribute to making the freaking pie in the first place. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so that's just part of it, and I've accepted it. That's, here, that's how it is on YouTube. You put yourself out there, people are going to take your ideas, and they're going to do it. It's just one of those things. I've accepted it, but it is still, it's still pretty annoying to a certain extent. But anyway, that's about it for the video. I have a bunch of work I got to get done and uh, appreciate all the support. And I will be adding many, many, many new things to the website here in the future. Um, just kind of got to fill or free up a printer and I'll be good to go. So that's it. I'll see you later. Peace.